Would you be ready for the end of the world? Would you be no. able to continue your way of life? Would you be able to say, create a robot hand out of a coffee maker? Absolutely not. <laughs> Folks, these are the questions that keep me up at night, and that's why we've brought on Evan Booth from Greensboro, North Carolina. He is a maker who, um, well, he makes things out of things that you wouldn't think could become those things. <laughs> that was a sentence. Those were words that came out It was out almost of elegant. I it liked was, it. Right? Evan, thank you very much for coming on to the new Screensavers. It's my pleasure. Now, um, refresh me here. You specialize in turning items that we know into items that we wouldn't expect. That's your, your superpower maker skill. Well, specialize is kind of a funny word, right? But yeah, I love doing that. That's, that's sort of my, my thing. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I got to say, because I, 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 there's I, I, current coffee makers. Yeah, yeah. So Good. we have the apocalypse. Current coffee makers are littering the landscape. Therefore, they are a perfect thing to turn into a robotic hand, or you have found so many useful things inside a current coffee maker that you were like, hey, I think I could do this and this and this. What was the process that got you from staring at a coffee maker to actually working on a robotic hand? Well, you know, I, it was kind of like that, right? So I, I think, well, first off, the the apocalypse thing. I, I don't think that's coming. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a prepper. You know, I, I don't have like, you know, a, a three three years worth of food in my basement or anything like that. You know, um, but I, I do think it's a really fun uh, sort of a, you know scenario to to base problem solving around, right? Uh, to start thinking about sure. um, you know how to build stuff, uh, and, and this kind of fuels me because in that particular scenario, like all you have is really the stuff around you, and and you've got to you got to make do. You got to build things. And so, um, you know, I started thinking about the curing, and um, I'd taken a few apart before, and there's just like a, a smattering of, of interesting components inside. Mm -hmm. And so you've got, I mean, you've got pneumatics, you've got electronics, um, you've got a boiler, uh, just some just some really cool stuff. And um, I started thinking like these these are these are everywhere, right? Right. I think they said last last year it was like nearly a, a third of American homes you'll find a curing in there or some sort of you know single cup coffee maker. Uh -huh. And so. Um, for me, it's it's just a way to uh, it's it's a good outlet for for my particular brand of, of you know making you know problem solving, but um, like a side benefit is is definitely that I, I want people to to look at this thing that they you know they you know you know don't care anything about they go and mm -hmm. gives them coffee quickly and and they go about their day um, and just have to stop and think about how much potential is actually in that thing that we just you know use without thinking thinking twice about it. It's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, the whole build is amazing. What, what made you, you know, decide to work on a hand? What was the inspiration for that? You know, uh, the big thing for me um, is that most of the stuff I've made before this are uh, things that, that, you know, no one else has really made or really, um, you know, uh, taken a stab at. Uh, the hand is cool for me because people are doing really amazing work. Uh, with, you know, like 3D printed, sure. you know, prosthetics and all this stuff. And so it, it sort of gave me a really nice baseline for comparison. So like someone who has, you know, uh, you know, additive manufacturing capabilities, right? They can get this far, you know, uh, with, you know, with, with a hand. Mm -hmm. um, how, how far can I get, or how close can I get to that with just a coffee maker, right? And it's something too that I think is, is it feels a lot of like uh, has a lot of accessibility. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got hands, you know. We, we take them for granted, obviously, and these, they're really complicated. It turns out, <laughs> but um, it, it's something that I feel like people people could really connect with. Absolutely. Now, I, I noticed that uh, a couple times there, you had the the hand made from a Keurig holding a coffee cup that looks like it had coffee made from a Keurig. Is that like cof coffee balism? <laughs> I mean, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, yeah. I think this is about the time you'd play that uh, the Inception like blah sound effect, right? <laughs> oh, now, what are the components inside of the Keurig that you were able to use? So, some sort of servo or stepper motor. I, I mean, obviously, you, you've reused the, the plastic mm -hmm. shell and shaped it the way that you want. But uh, what, what were the, the primary pieces that you needed to pull out yes. and reuse? So the, <laughs> Sorry, the main really things <laughs> are the, uh, the, um, the 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 motor that drives the, the actual like grip is the, uh, the motor and gear assembly that is used to pump the, uh, the water out of the reservoir into the boiler, right? So that's, that's kind of the big thing. Um, I'm also using uh, an air pump that I ended up um, sort of gutting out and building like a really gangster like electronic speed controller. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was simply because that, that motor and gear assembly for the reservoir, it just moved too quickly. So the hand would end up like, you know, closing and opening too fast. It wouldn't be very, 
very usable and I didn't really have enough components inside from like from an electronic standpoint to build a proper um, you know, speed controller or anything like that. That's a pretty awesome accomplishment to sort of hack yeah. together a speed controller on the fly. <laughs> it was a tremendous amount of fun, like crazy. What? I, I was just about to say that uh, I, I love what you're doing here because I, I'm a maker, you're a maker, mm -hmm. your co-host is a maker, my co-host is a maker, but a lot of the projects that we do, because of the tools we have available to us, especially things like 3D printers and really cheap CAD programs and incredibly cheap components that we could just throw together and, and turn into whatever we need, there's not a lot of attention anymore being paid to, well, what goes into the equipment that we use? Mm -hmm. So I, I can take that apart if necessary. I love the fact that you've done this. What other devices have you looked at as potential sources of raw materials and components? So, uh, so my last project, I, I used a lot of stuff that you can buy in airports uh, specifically, but um, as far as like this, this sort of thing, uh, as a as sort of an ongoing project, um, here is, is kind of it, you know, like there's a, there's a ton of potential and I don't know, most, most everything. I just felt like Keurig was, was a kind of a, I don't know, a, a good, a good uh, baseline example. Oh my goodness. What's, uh, do you know what you're going to be working on next? So I'd love to build, um, a hydroelectric generator. Um, <laughs> yes. Cool. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Cause I mean, once you, once you have the ability to, to generate power, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the next step is, is pretty, um, pretty unlimited. So from there, I would love to do, uh, I, I, I've been researching a lot lately and I feel like there's enough components to build, um, uh, either AM or FM, um, transceiver. Uh, so the ability to broadcast and to receive on, on AM, AM, AM or FM. No, I gotta um, ask. Broadcast to receive AM or FM from parts in a Keurig or salvage parts from other places. <laughs> oh, just just one single Keurig. Like all of these wow. would just be one Keurig. Yeah. See, that's that's what I want. You know, like if that's, if, that's epic. If, <laughs> if I if I knew like for sure that I can do it before I get started, then it's not hard enough, right? <laughs> I I. <Yeah. laughs> Wait a minute! It, you, I, you build it. It's gutsy because it's impossible to do a sh <laughs> to do a video about making even when you have you think you have all of the parts and the tools and supplies. That's so gutsy, dude! It's awesome. <laughs> well, who thought you could build a hand, right? <laughs> Not me. I was amazed. You're, you're building a way to replace severed limbs. You're building right. a way to generate power, and you're building a way to transmit for help. Are you sure you're not an apocalypse prepper? You know, I guess it depends on uh, depends on the weather, right? I don't know. Oh we'll my see. goodness! What's the website, man? It's jitterymacgyver.com. Uh, Jittery ever. MacGyver is just the name of the name of the project. First thing I came up with. So perfect. I love it, and uh, very appropriately timed, by the way. I may say. Oh my goodness, Evan! Thank you yeah. so much for joining us today. That is it's been my pleasure. Build. Well, let me just say real quick. I, I was like this close to wearing my uh, Megabot shirt just randomly. It <laughs> would have been, been so embarrassing. <laughs> Something's got to change. That's inception. <laughs> <laughs> Evan oh. Booth from Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you very much for your call. My pleasure. Now uh, that man is building, rebuilding society after an apocalypse, one Keurig at a time. That's epic. I forgot to ask him though, what would happen if the hand uh, continued the Keurig DRM? would only like work once you put up a new pod. I'm not even touching that yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>